We're getting to the end of 2024 here. So if you haven't done your required minimum distribution yet, you should be planning on taking it in the next couple of weeks. You don't yep. want to wait until the last minute in case something goes wrong with processing. But Tom, let's start from the top, required minimum distributions. Who has to take these and lead us into um, how, how you calculate your RMD? If you have not started taking your RMDs, your required minimum distributions, uh, if you have not started before 2024, your starting age will now be 73. And so uh, it used to be age 70 and a half, or you could defer it a little bit until April 1st of the year after you turn 70 and a half. We're, we're really splitting hairs with that. But then they uh, kicked it out with the first version of the SECURE Act to age 72. And now it's age 73 with SECURE 2.0 Act. And there's a lot of unknown and there seems to be a lot of mystery about it. I can say that for a fact because it's probably our most watched video on our YouTube channel in the last year. So people, people want to know, people have questions about RMDs. Like you said, they have changed a lot over the years. I think, uh, in about another five years, it's going to be pushed out even further to age 70, but they're talking about 75, 70, that's what I meant. 75. Yep. Um, yeah. So, so and yeah. the, the, the thing that I, I try and drive home when we're talking about this is listen to what the title is. It's a required minimum distribution. Now, when you're taking money out of a retirement account, this is money that has not been taxed. And so you will have to show this as taxable income, just as if you earned it on the job. And uh, you have to prepare to have taxes withheld. Your 401k provider or the bank or brokerage where you have your IRA, they can do the tax withholding for you, usually federal and state. But you want to make sure that you're not leaving this to chance or leaving it all until the end where you'll have to settle up and pay a big tax bill the following year. Yeah, um, or not take it at all and, and be penalized for that. I think it's 25% of yeah. the RMD. Used to, used to be 50%. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's important. You don't want to put yourself in, you don't ever want to put yourself in a situation where you're penalized taking money out of something like a 401k or an IRA. Right. Um, but it is something that you have to, you have to contend with from a, an income perspective. Like you said, it is taxable income and, uh, you know, from a, so from a, a tax perspective in retirement, you want to kind of, you know, your RMD start date is an important time because if you want to do, you are required to take this. So it's, it is a known. So if you want to, you know, try and lessen that or try and, um, you know, you want to manage around that date basically is what I'm getting at and do everything you can to, uh, to not be surprised when it comes for tax time. So just a high level of, of how to calculate it. It's based on what balance is, is it based it's, on? It's based on the value of the account on December 31st, the year before. So right. you actually have to go back to last year, every year. What was the balance at on 1231 of the year before? That is the number that's used to calculate your required minimum distribution. And the math behind it is based on a life expectancy table. Right. That's straight from the IRS. It, it's a, like you said, life expectancy table. It assigns a factor to each age. So, uh, you know, it breaks it down. If you're 72, you divide your account balance by X 73, it changes each year. So the account balance is going to change and the factor, uh, that you're dividing the, the account balance by is going to change every year. Yeah. People ask us all the time. Okay. So I'm going to be taking, uh, you know, $14,000 a year from my IRA. No. That number is going to change, that the minimum number is going to change every single year for the two factors that Casey just mentioned. The first is the life expectancy table. You know, as you get older, you have a shorter life expectancy. That's just the way it is. And so you actually have to take out a bigger percentage each year. The other factor is, you know, if we have a good year in the market last year, you're going to be taking out more next year in your RMD because it's based on the balance on 1231 of last year. Uh, we have a year like 2022 where, you know, markets were down a lot. Uh, you may have a smaller required minimum distribution the next year, again, because of what happened in, in the account. Right. Yeah. So a couple of different factors to watch out for there. Like you said, it's not just going to be a set flat number per year. What if someone has an I, or what if someone has two IRAs and a 401k? What if they have multiple accounts that they have to take RMDs from? 
can they batch it together and take it all from one account or do they have to spread it out across each account? Good question. If all of your retirement money is sitting in IRA accounts, then you can batch it together and say, okay, my total distribution is going to be $26,328. I'm going to take it from this one account over here. That's possible if all of your retirement money is sitting in IRAs. If you have a 401k account, you're going to have to do a required minimum distribution from your 401k. So let's use an example where you've got three different IRAs and you have a 401k with an old employer. You can batch those three IRAs and take it out of one account or take you know an equal amount out of all three. You still have to take a required minimum distribution from your 401k. Now, they pull all of the balances together to calculate how much needs to come out on an annual basis. But with a 401k, there has to be a distribution each year. You can't skip that. Got it. Important to remember. And uh, we get a ton of questions on that. Yeah, definitely. So be sure to get that done before the end of the year. Like you said, you can have taxes withheld right from there. Uh, right, you know, when you as you do the distribution, you can have taxes withheld, and um, that we do is... have we do have clients that uh, when they're taking the distribution, instead of getting a check or a direct deposit at the bank, they just move it over to their investment account, right? And you know, we you know we continue to invest the money for yeah. them if they if they're not in a pinch. Yeah, you don't have to spend the money; you just have to pay tax on it because, like you said before, it went in all went in pre tax into those retirement accounts, grew tax deferred, so. You yeah. got to pay tax on it at some point, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, and that's something else, Case, that, that we have talked about. Uh, you and I have been in meetings uh, along with Brendan and Tim when we're sitting down with clients. When we talk about these required minimum distributions, and then we also talk about clients who they might need some cash flow before their RMDs are, before the required distributions kick in at 72 or 73. Uh, we talk about, hey, th there's nothing wrong with taking money from your retirement accounts at 67, 68, 69. There's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, that's going to lower your overall base on your retirement account. So you'll have less of a required minimum distribution to take out in the future. Yeah, that's what I was getting at before when I was talking about managing around the RMD start date. You know, it might make sense for you to pull, uh, like you said, pull money from these tax deferred accounts and, uh, kind of front run some of that uh, tax liability, if you will, when when you are required to take the money out. So it's all about right. knowing uh, knowing your different buckets of income, like we've, we've hammered home several times here, know which different buckets of income you have. The more buckets of income you have, the more options you give yourself, the more questions you'll probably have for us when we come and uh, sit together around the conference room table. Yep. But um, we didn't even talk about inherited IRAs. I was gonna, should... I was gonna go there, but I feel like we could spend another fifteen minutes talking about that. So that'll be another episode. I do think we have some pretty good YouTube videos out on uh, on inherited IRAs, so we will be sure to link those up in this video. Tom, I think that's gonna do it. We've covered a lot of ground here, talking about uh, planning for income in retirement. So thank you as always for tuning in, and we will be back with you on the next one.